Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, yellow jackets. Um, how many had an issue with yellow jackets last year? Yeah. So I was keeping bees for at least five years before I realized that yellow jackets could be a problem. And unfortunately, the way I found out was uh, they killed three of my hives in the fall that I maintained for the club up at Deer Path Park. They just targeted the first one. I reduced the entrance. I thought I did all the right things. They killed it, moved on to the second one, killed it, and moved on to the third one and killed it. So uh, after five years, I realized that yellow jackets can be a real problem. And I think last year was a pretty bad year for yellow jackets. Um, so I learned a lot about yellow jackets after I lost the first one. So first of all, um, yellow jackets usually forage within 500 to 1,000 feet of the nest. So the best thing you can do if you have yellow jackets is watch where they're going and find the nest and destroy the nest, right? That, that's number one. That's the best thing. The other thing I found out was that yellow jackets, when they're raising larvae early in the year, the larvae give off a sweet substance and the adult yellow jackets eat that sweet substance and that's part of their carbohydrate. So later on in the summer when there's not a lot of brood around, that's when they're out looking for something sweet. And that's why they become a problem in late summer and fall because they're out there sniffing the honey from your hives. Okay. So um, the other thing I learned about yellow jackets is, Kevin you like this, they're seasonally eusocial, <laughs> which, means, <laughs> which means that only the queen, the mated queen, is the only one that overwinters from the hive. Okay, so what happens is she finds a place that's kind of nice and warm and out of the weather, and she winters over, and then she comes out in the spring and she starts a new nest, raises some females, starts raising more, and she builds the nest up. The drones are produced in the late summer, and the virgin queens are. They mate in the fall, the drones die, and the virgin queens that are, are, aren't virgins anymore, the mated queens winter over. Okay, so it's only the queen that winters over. So, one of the best things you can do any time of year, but particularly in the spring, is to make yellow jacket traps and put them out. And why is that? Because what are you going to catch in the spring? Queen. Mated queens, right? So if you catch queens, you catch the queens that are in your area, you know, they're not going to have nests within 500 to 1,000 feet, and you're not going to have a problem, okay? So really simple yellow jacket trap. Two liter bottle, right? Just cut the top off and do that. And then you fill it up with, and there's some pictures. Here's the recipe, okay? Quarter cup of sugar. Half a cup. Half a cup, sorry. <laughs> a cup of ap apple cider vinegar. Banana peel and four cups of water, and you put it in here, and you set this out. And what happens is they smell it, they go in, and they can't find their way out. Okay, and they're trapped. So, wait, let me just finish one thing and I'll take that question. So, what you want to do is get these out early. Okay, April 1st, put them out. And where do you want to put them? You want to put them at the perimeter of your apiary, right? Or you can put them near your hives but low to the ground. Okay, if you're going to put them in the apiary, put them near your hives, low to the ground, or put them at the perimeter of your apiary. I'll put four or five of them, and you'd be surprised how many you'll catch. And it, again, in the beginning, what are you going to be? You're going to be catching mated queens. So that's why it's important to do it now. Do these things work later in the summer? They do. Okay, but, it, you know, all, with all those yellow jackets, there's still a nest full of them somewhere, right? So you can't catch them all. A question in the back. How often would you refill it? I usually, I usually dump it out through a strainer, strain out the yellow jackets and put the juice back in because I'm cheap. <laughs> I use it over, it works. Just a statement to go with that question. I've seen a very similar recipe and it seems we built one of these before mm -hmm. and 
you don't get hornets and yellow jackets, you also get wax moths. Right? Oh, yes. Good point. Thank you. So you'll get wax moths too. That's an extra, no extra charge. <laughs> What's the recipe? Is, is, does it matter or the same? It's the one I just showed you. Half a cup. No, it's the same recipe. Oh, okay. Now, you, there are the recipes out on the internet if you want to try them. There are some that use meat, okay, because we know yellow jackets are meat eaters. But I find that this one really works well. What's, the, what's in that that's not attracting the bees? I think it's the vinegar. Okay. Um, you know, the vinegar, I think, I think, and I'm not sure of this, gives off a uh, smell like rotting it, You would think so flesh. Or sugar water bees would be on that. Right, but it's the, it's the vinegar that is why they don't go after it. Yes. About, about yo deep. Okay. Right? Because you, you want to make it so that ideally they fly in and they fly, get right into the water and then they don't get up. Okay? You all. You can also put a drop of uh, dish soap in there if you want, because that way, once they hit the water, they they don't get out. They can't. The, the surface tension uh, can't, climb the can't climb up the walls. No, well, they climb up here, but they can't find their way out of that little hole in the middle. So they're up here, like you saw on the video. After a day of rain, do you have to replace the? Uh, the yeah, you got to keep them out of the rain, or or it dilutes. But yeah, you might have to change it or put a cover on it or something. So did you ever get that many in one of your traps? I yeah, I didn't, br I didn't bring my picture, but I have, uh, I, I like to keep them kind of as trophies, you know? <laughs> so, so, so I told you, I pour, I pour them through and then I put them into a, a, a two gallon bucket and there was about this many in the bottom after a week. After a week, I had this many yellow jackets from four or five traps. I saw that bucket. You saw that bucket, yeah. So displays the skull of his enemies. <laughs> okay, so you know, do yourself a favor and put them out. It can't hurt. It costs almost nothing. They die off in there. They die off in there, yeah. Once they get into the water, eventually they struggle, struggle, struggle. They, once they hit the water, then they're they're done. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, the recipe, I, I got this off of Rodale, if you guys know Rodale. So just, just Google do-it-yourself, do it DYI, uh, yellow jacket trap, and this is out there. Okay, a um, couple other things while I'm up here, before we, we get to that, got 10 minutes. Huh? How do you apply the banana peel? You just drop it in there, here. Flip back up, you can see the picture. You just put it in, put it in the bottle, into the bo bottom of the bottle. The darker and smellier it is, the better. 